In the notes of the first scientists who observed the sky with telescopes, Saturn was always described with similar words, extraordinary, unique, inexplicable. That's because Saturn's rings look like a delicate silhouette etched into the darkness of space. But now that image has slowly begun to fade. On the morning of March 29, 2025, NASA had a routine observation scheduled for Saturn. The event, known as a ring plane crossing, occurs when Saturn's ring system aligns perfectly edge-on with Earth. This alignment happens once every 14 to 15 years, making the rings almost completely invisible from our vantage point. That's because, on average, Saturn's rings are only about 30 feet thick, and from the side they reflect almost no light. But this year's crossing wasn't like the previous ones. Images captured by space telescopes showed Saturn appearing almost completely stripped of its rings. Not even during the Cassini mission had such a distinct disappearance been seen, nor in Hubble's 1995 and 2009 observations had the fading been this clear. The difference wasn't just due to the alignment. Beyond what telescopes revealed, physical weakening within the ring system itself was also recorded. Long-term data collected since the Cassini mission shows that Saturn's rings are slowly but steadily vanishing. In fact, NASA's 2018 findings link this process to a phenomenon called ring rain. It's now confirmed that roughly 10 tons of ring material falls into Saturn's atmosphere every second. That's equivalent to losing enough mass to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool every 30 minutes. Ring rain occurs when the ice and dust particles in Saturn's rings interact with the planet's magnetic field and are slowly pulled into the atmosphere. The process is driven by charged particle dynamics in the upper atmosphere. Ultraviolet light from the sun charges the ring particles, and once they're electrically active, they begin to follow the magnetic field lines towards Saturn's poles, eventually falling into the upper layers of the atmosphere, where they disintegrate. During Cassini's grand finale dive in 2017, this interaction was measured directly, and the density of this ring rain turned out to be surprisingly high. By March 2025, this process had become noticeable not just in scientific models, but in actual telescope observations. The brightness of the rings dropped by nearly 20% compared to previous crossings. This revealed that the rings aren't just fading visually, their physical mass is also shrinking at an alarming rate. And this leads to a critical question. If the rings are vanishing this quickly, could what we're seeing now be their final act? Because it seems Saturn isn't just changing. It's actively dissolving its rings from within, pulling them into its atmosphere, and doing so with a quiet but accelerating pace. And according to recent measurements, that pace may be approaching a dangerous threshold. Ring rain isn't just a physical loss. The material falling into Saturn's atmosphere doesn't only bring water vapor. It also carries sodium, carbon, methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and even micron-sized organic molecules, creating a complex chemical mix. These substances begin to dissolve in the upper layers of the atmosphere, disrupting its local chemical balance. In other words, this isn't rain, it's a toxic cocktail. According to NASA, this process is reshaping Saturn's atmosphere from the outside in. And this reshaping doesn't just affect the atmosphere's chemical makeup, it's also starting to alter its electromagnetic behavior. And as you might expect, that's triggering a chain reaction. Saturn's magnetic field is one of the most symmetrical in the entire solar system. But behind that symmetry lies a surprising weakness. Throughout its mission, the Cassini probe recorded a steady decline in magnetic energy, despite the field's seemingly stable appearance. Normally, Saturn's magnetosphere deflects high-energy particles from the Sun, shielding the planet's atmosphere from harmful radiation. But recent analyses suggest that this magnetic shield is gradually weakening. During Cassini's final maneuvers, especially on the sunlit side, magnetic reconnection events were observed more frequently. These are moments when magnetic field lines suddenly break and reconnect, a dynamic that creates temporary gaps in the planet's protective barrier. During these reconnection events, ionized particles from the solar wind can directly reach Saturn's atmosphere. The increased ionization caused by falling ring particles only amplifies this interaction. Saturn's upper atmosphere is no longer just a passive layer of gases, it has become electrically active. This enhances its connection to magnetic field lines and makes it easier for the solar wind to penetrate. Cassini's magnetometer data from 2004 to 2017 showed a steady intensification of this effect. The planet's magnetic field strength declined slightly but consistently over time, 
and that decline appears to coincide with changes in Saturn's rotation period. A planet's magnetic field typically arises from motion within its internal conductive layers, but data on Saturn's core suggests that this internal motion may no longer be stable. One possible factor is the shifting internal pressure caused by helium rain, an effect that could be disrupting the usual flow inside. At this point, Saturn may no longer be able to protect not only itself, but also its most precious features. As Saturn's magnetic field weakens, its radiation belt, the outer extension of its protective shield, begins to expand. Normally, this belt traps charged particles from the Sun, holding them in curved orbits around the planet. But the system is now becoming unstable, and this change is having a direct impact on Saturn's natural satellites. Moons like Enceladus and Titan, which are believed to harbor subsurface liquid water, are facing increasing radiation pressure. Cassini data has shown that the ice shell over Enceladus's North Pole has become more active in recent years. Geyser eruptions are occurring more frequently, more irregularly, and with higher particle density. This suggests that the Moon's subsurface ocean pressure and its outer crust are both being influenced by external forces. The icy plumes erupting from Enceladus are not only carrying subsurface water into space, they also contain complex organic compounds. The chemical makeup of this material includes fundamental ingredients potentially essential for microbial life, but rising radiation levels may damage these molecules. In other words, every drop that reaches the surface now breaks down faster and disappears more quickly. Titan, on the other hand, presents a different picture. Its thick atmosphere may offer some protection for the surface's liquid hydrocarbon lakes. However, the expanding weak spots in Saturn's magnetic field have begun to penetrate its atmosphere. Simulations for NASA's Dragonfly mission have shown a significant increase in ionization levels in Titan's upper atmosphere. This poses a threat not just to the possibility of microbial life, but also to the safety of exploration missions like Dragonfly. Increased radiation could interfere with electronic systems and compromise the chemical integrity of collected samples. So the threat isn't just to life, it's also to our efforts to find it. And these problems aren't limited to just a few moons. The entire Saturn system is slipping into a state of instability. Saturn's moon system was once a model of balance, maintained not just by gravity, but by rhythm. At the center of that balance was Titan. Its size and orbital position helped regulate the movement of other moons, maintaining the system's overall stability. But new data shows that Titan is drifting away from Saturn, at a rate nearly a hundred times faster than expected. This surprising conclusion came from a reanalysis of Cassini data. Scientists had previously estimated that Titan was receding from Saturn by about 0.1 centimeters per year. But recent measurements suggest that the actual rate may be as high as 11 centimeters per year. That makes it one of the fastest moon migrations ever recorded in our solar system. What does this really mean? Titan's outward drift isn't just a simple case of orbital migration. It signals an internal instability in Saturn's gravitational system. Typically, a moon moves outward when it's locked in a gravitational resonance with the planet's rotation. But in Saturn's case, that lock appears to be breaking down. Internal energy losses and the weakening of the magnetic field may be disrupting this harmony. As Titan moves farther away, Saturn's gravitational influence on its other moons is also being redistributed. This can trigger new orbital resonances and lead to chaotic shifts in the paths of smaller moons. The system that once orbited in orderly precision is now becoming unstable, fluctuating and unpredictable. And this growing instability appears to extend all the way to the planet's core. Gravitational data gathered from Cassini's orbital flybys has reignited long-standing questions about Saturn's core, and it's becoming clear that something isn't quite right deep inside the planet. For decades, scientists tried to define Saturn's core using classical models. According to these models, the planet's center should contain a compact mix of rock and metal about the size of Earth. But the gravity data didn't support this assumption. Instead, the measured internal density suggested a diffuse, layered, and irregular interior. This structure has been described as a hazy core. The term refers to a region that lacks a clear boundary, spread out across hundreds of thousands of miles and made up of a semi-fluid, loosely structured mix. This diffuse nature leads to instability in the planet's internal pressure system. Without a sharp boundary between the core and the surrounding layers, energy cannot transfer evenly. 
One process in particular seems to amplify this imbalance. Helium rain. Inside Saturn, mixtures of hydrogen and helium begin to separate at certain pressures and temperatures. As helium condenses into droplets, it starts to fall deeper into the planet, like a rain shower inside its atmosphere. And this inner turmoil is now leaving visible marks in Saturn's atmosphere. Take, for example, the famous hexagon storm at Saturn's North Pole, a structure that has fascinated scientists for years with its unique geometry. First discovered by Voyager in the 1980s, the pattern drew attention for its perfect symmetry and stability. But that stability is now fading because something strange is happening. The color is changing and no one knows exactly why. The storm's shape is the result of powerful jet streams circling the upper atmosphere in a highly organized flow. Spanning about 20,000 miles across, the hexagon looks like a fixed shape, but it isn't solid. Its edges aren't drawn by straight lines, but by the interaction of air bands spinning at different speeds. In other words, the shape is not permanent. It's the product of a delicate balance, and that balance appears to be shifting. Once a soft blue, the hexagon has taken on a golden hue. The likely cause lies in chemistry triggered by sunlight. Saturn's North Pole experiences extreme seasonal cycles of light and darkness. When sunlight fades, the hydrocarbons in the upper atmosphere slowly break down. But when light returns, these molecules begin forming more complex compounds, generating tiny particles that shift the storm's color. That golden yellow tint now suggests a higher concentration of hydrocarbons in Saturn's skies. But it's not just the color of the storm that's changing. The internal structure is shifting too. Observations from both Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope have revealed that smaller vortex systems within the hexagon are becoming more concentrated. Circulation speeds are increasing. This suggests that instability is building in Saturn's lower atmosphere, and the rising energy may be disrupting the hexagon's symmetry from within. And this is where things start to get worse. Because the disorder in Saturn's atmosphere isn't staying confined to the planet itself, it's beginning to leave a mark on the broader balance of the solar system. It's now clear that the changes unfolding on Saturn aren't limited to the planet itself. The solar system is not just a collection of independent orbits. It's a connected network of gravity, resonance, and energy transfer. When a deep internal change occurs on one planet, it can gradually ripple through the rest of the system. And when that planet is as massive as Saturn, the effects are far from small. One of the most important gravitational relationships in the outer solar system is the interaction between Saturn and Jupiter. These two gas giants act as stabilizing anchors, shaping asteroid belts, influencing the orbits of small celestial bodies, and affecting the distribution of objects in the Kuiper belt. But as Saturn's gravitational field begins to weaken, that delicate balance may also begin to shift. Post-Cassini models suggest that mass loss in Saturn's upper atmosphere and magnetosphere could, over time, lead to measurable changes in the planet's gravitational pull. Even a shift on the scale of millimeters could introduce subtle disruptions in the resonance between Jupiter and Saturn. And in a system this interconnected, even minor shifts can trigger wider effects. According to current planetary migration models, early solar system dynamics were shaped by these very kinds of resonance disturbances. Jupiter's inward drift toward the Sun and its later outward push, along with the orbital rearrangement of Uranus and Neptune, are all thought to be driven by such shifts. Saturn's magnetic field also served as a major barrier against the solar wind, deflecting charged particles streaming in from the Sun. But as this field weakens, scientists expect that these ionized particles will begin to spread more freely throughout the solar system. This could increase radiation exposure for spacecraft and influence the behavior of comets and smaller celestial bodies. Current data suggests that what's happening on Saturn is powerful enough to create ripple effects even in the distant reaches of the solar system. In other words, this isn't just a localized shift. It may be the first sign of a broader systemic change. NASA's upcoming Dragonfly mission, scheduled for launch in 2028, will play a crucial role in answering these questions. This rotorcraft, destined for Titan, won't just study the Moon's surface. It will also measure how changes across the Saturn system are affecting Titan itself. Data on atmospheric ionization, the distribution of organic molecules, and radiation exposure will help us understand just how far this transformation has gone. By the time Dragonfly arrives in 2034, it may be our last chance to directly observe these changes. 
If current trends continue, Saturn's rings will be disappearing even faster by then, and its weakening magnetic field will be even more pronounced. Saturn is on a path to becoming a planet without rings. Future generations may never see it as we do today. And what we're witnessing now may not just be the transformation of a planet, but the unraveling of a 4.5 billion year balance. 